best strategy um, that I, I saw and that I practiced was just being human, um, just being myself, and also remembering that people, even if they have contradicting beliefs, are also humans. Um, so being able to, to see each person rather than thinking of a person as somebody who doesn't agree with me, as someone who is against me, as someone who is um, hurting me, even though those things may be true, um, I think it's a really good strategy to remember that we're all part of the same thing, which I believe is love. So in 2008, we visited Louisiana College, and Louisiana College was not very keen to have us there in their town or on their campus. Um, and in that situation, we, uh, through organizing with, with folks who were local, folks who were alum, folks who were no longer attending the school but had previously been a part of that campus, um, we determined that the appropriate course of action was to engage in a silent vigil. And so one of the nights that we were in town, we assembled with a crew of just amazing local organizers and stood vigil, presenting ourselves um, with, with love and nonviolence, demonstrating um, what, what it meant to us to, to be physical and, and spiritually present manifestations of God's love. It was an intense space. There was a line of police, there was a crew of students up on a hill looking down on us, and then there were a few students who were um, kind of processing back and forth behind us, and they would periodically lay hands on us and pray over us and commit all kinds of spiritual violence. Um, and one of them even had like this giant maglite flashlight that he was like tapping in his hand in a way that just had my dear friend Tara Davis scared out of her shoes. Um, and she, she was like communicating with me that she was not feeling safe. Um, and so I stepped out and being the handy Girl Scout that I was or am, um, I have had a headlamp in my backpack <laughs> for, for occasions such as this. And so I approached this young man and I was like, hey, you know, your flashlight actually could be an instrument of violence and so some people are scared right now and I'm wondering if you need that to read your Bible would you be willing to trade with me because I have this thing that it's kind of flimsy but it's really bright and he wasn't having any of that so um, he instead took his maglite and he threw it over the crowd of soul force folk into the bushes and I was like all right well that's the solution to you cool thank you and you know resumes our, our silent protest As we were leaving the campus though, eventually we, you know, we, we sang some songs and shared some stories and then we got on our bus and we went back to our hotel and, and we're, you know, pretty anxious. There was a lot of tension in the air. We pulled into the parking lot and, and I watched as a pickup truck pulled in right at the same time and they, sh they turned off their engine and shut off their lights and I was like, this doesn't feel any kind of good. Um, and so I connected with Dondi, our bus driver, and a couple other folks, and I was like, hey, like, we should maybe check this out before we all pile off this bus. And so sure enough, they went and they asked these two young men in a pickup truck what they were up to. The two young men who had followed us in our bus back to our hotel, in fact, were two young closeted gay men from Louisiana College who had never before interacted with openly queer people. Um, who believed that God loved them just the way they were, and they just wanted to talk to us and be with us. Um, and so we spent the next several hours just being in their presence and, and making sure that they knew that they were loved. So having had the privilege of doing two different equality rides with a four-year gap, um, I, had a, I had a chance to learn and grow in between those time periods. And something that for me changed was in 2008, I was doing a whole lot of defensive theology. 
and was really committed to explaining to people how the Bible was not intended to be used as a weapon against me. But my strategy was, was to kind of shine a light on the things that they were misusing as weapons. And, and while that's valuable and necessary, for me, what proved to be most healing was to actually turn to the pieces of scripture that have, for my entire life, been sustaining and inspiring um, and life-giving, and, and to highlight those pieces, to connect with people around what we share and what we value, and build out from that, and to reflect on the way in which, though, Queer and trans people are often um, forgotten or misrepresented that we have been in holy spaces and in holy words for the entirety of, of existence. Um, and so highlighting that for people is not only a critical part of how we transform theology and religion and church and spirituality, uh, but it's part of how we heal.